together as one to sing your praise Jesus we desire to seek your face hearts united undivided our praise is breaking through God we can see that you're moving spirit Good morning church, I want to invite all of us to stand this morning For all of us at the Battle Hall, please stand For those who are watching online, welcome to our 9 o'clock service You are joining us, every one of us here at Battle Hall So right now I just want you to just type on the chat and say Praise God you are here this morning, hallelujah Now the count of three, I want all of us in, in Battle Hall To give the Lord a standing ovation by clapping as loud as we can The count of three, one, two, three, yeah Hallelujah for those of you out there watching right now, would you type hallelujah or praise the Lord? Praise Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, this morning, I want to do something different. You know, every weekend, we have our online service hosts. They are serving us. They are watching at the screen. So this morning, I have Pastor Jardine, uh, Pastor Wai Ching, Sister Hui Hui, and, and Davian is there. So why don't those of you who are watching online, would you just type Praise God, uh, you are awesome. Just give a word of encouragement to all our online service hosts. They are serving us faithfully every weekend, connecting with you. And for those of us right here in the bed hall, one more time, shall we give the Lord a big praise offering? <laughs> Hallelujah. Church, are you ready to worship the Lord? Yeah. If you are ready, would you type the word ready? Come on, church, give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Thank Amen. You, thank Hallelujah. you, thank you, Lord. Why don't we clap together? He moved the sunset free streaming and we are free and by the blood of Christ. Amen. Can someone shout a big amen? Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, Lord. Oh, come on, let's declare it out right now. The three the mute will sing, the three the dead will rise, three all hearts will praise, three the darkness leaves. Come on, say it. Three my heart screams, I am free. Shout it out! I am free. I am free. 
Lord, we are so free in you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's worship God with this song. A new song we're going to learn. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. now I'm caught in your gaze drenched in your grace wrapped in your embrace to stay with you my joy is made for the distance from you you saw me through and through how I long for
tell him, tell him, God, all we want is you. All we want is you, Jesus. No one else, no one else but you. Oh, let the worship from your heart arise. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord. All we want is you. Good, good, oh, you are good. 
church, it's always easy to sing, you are good, you are good, when things are going well. But it gets harder to sing, you, God, you are good, whenever you're facing a situation. Especially right now, as we read each day, the news of the numbers of pandemic cases are coming up. It is important for us this morning as a church, you're watching online, right here for all of us, you better hall. We're going to sing it one more time as a worship, declaring, God, you are good. Because I believe this morning as we sing and declare, we are saying, God, come once again and do a mighty work in our nation. Can you hear loud? Amen. Come, if you believe that, we should give a lot of big, big praise already this morning. Thank you, Lord. Because we serve a good God. Thank you, Lord. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Come on church, you are online, type the word good, God is good, hallelujah, come on keep typing, God is good, oh, you lift up holy hands, thank you Lord, so good, oh, and you are good, good, oh, you're never gonna you're never gonna you, let me down. You're, you're never, never gonna, gonna let. You're never, never gonna, gonna let me down. Thank you, Jesus. You're Come on, church. Never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. We lift up holy hands to you this morning. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me. Come on, come on, just sing it. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me. Come on, church, lift up your holy hands. For those of you who are watching online, let's begin to respond to what God is going to do in our midst. Let's begin to respond to what God is going to do in your situation. Let's begin to respond to God, what God is going to do in your child right now. Shake it. Hallelujah. Father, this morning we declare there is no other name in heaven and on earth that deserve all praise, all glory and all honour. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning that many who are tuning in online and those of us who are here on site, Lord, we count it a joy and a privilege to be able to stand in your presence this morning to declare indeed you are a good God. You are a God that is so good that God, we can stand upon your promises that are yes and amen. And I believe, Father, this morning that God, as you receive our worship, Lord, we believe your presence will going to do something deep in our hearts, in our life, in our family, in our church, and also this nation. Father, we will continue to declare your goodness over this nation, even in the midst of what we are reading each day about the pandemic. 
Lord, we declare that you are more than able to defeat this virus in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause your church to be strong once again, that we will be the salt and the light, that Lord, we will not be shaken yes. by what we read, but we are going to pray until your kingdom come, your will be done That's on right. earth yes. as it is in heaven. Yes. In a powerful name yes. of Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people will say, Come on, you believe that you give the Lord a big praise offering this morning? Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. You're so good, oh God. Come on, church, give the Lord a big praise. Come on, church. You're watching online. Would you type the word good? I believe God is doing something in our midst this morning. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. How many sense the presence of the Lord is with us this morning? Because God lives in the worship of His people. And those of you who are watching online, would you like type the word alive? Because our God is alive. All right, before you turn to your neighbors, before you sit there and say, Hey, I'm so glad to see you here. Why don't you wave and just uh, give a fist bump to one another and say, I'm so glad you are here this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, please be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Now, once again, I want to invite all of us to just, you know, appreciate all our servers, our Asha, our media team, our CAM team. Let's give them a big, big hand for coming early, for serving us this morning. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we want to welcome those who are joining us for the first time on site. In a moment's time, I'm going to I will catch up with those who are watching online. But if you are here for the first time, you are a very special guest, would you please wave at me so we can welcome you in Jesus' name. Anyone who is new, uh, first time or the second time, somehow or other you just came in, you know, and you're enjoying the ministry here, you have not really connected with us yet. Anyone here? All right, don't worry. If following this service, following this service, what you can do, all right, or uh, first thing first, you can actually scan the QR code just in front of your seat, all right, the first time guest. Uh, scan the QR code and then you fill out the information so that we can continue to connect with you. And then following service, if you know to talk to our pastor or talk to our leaders, we're actually right behind there. They have a lanyard. We're going to talk to them. They're very friendly how we can welcome you to serve you. And you have a prayer need, they can pray for you. All right, for those of you who are here at Battle Hall, for those who are watching online right now, would you just... Hit the, uh, click the connect button uh, Fill up the, uh, the information So that we continue to keep in touch with you And then following this service Come and join us at Hello at Grace Our pastors Pastor Jadine Pastor Wai Cheng Sister Hui Hui And, and David will be there To be able to welcome you And to connect with you To this great and exciting church Alright, so for those who are watching online Welcome once again to Grace Assembly Online Service Amen Let's get ready to, to give to the Lord this morning You know, one of the things about worship it's just more than just worship with songs. Our giving is also an expression of our worship. Can you allow amen? And for those of you who are watching online right now, you can open your bank app and scan uh, the QR code. I'd like to read for us 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8. It says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I like the word, I like the scriptures. And earlier on, Pastor Victor and the team led us, the king of my heart. And this morning, as we return our time, give our love gift, give our mission gift. What is God, the king of your heart? And so this morning, I want to challenge us as we return our giving. Let's continue to give in faith, especially those who are going through a very challenging moment is we do not hold back. We want to continue to give to God because we're going to, we're going to trust God. He is our provider. Amen. So let us pray this morning. Father, we want to thank you indeed. You are such a good and generous God. And today, Lord, even as we return our tithe, give our missions, our love offering to you. Lord, it comes because we love you. It comes from a posture of generosity just as the way you have blessed us, you have given to us. And I pray this morning, would you bless every gift and every giver and I ask this morning for those who are going through very difficult moments times like this especially those in the F&B uh, industry Lord we just want to bless them we pray that God will you grant them innovative ideas and strategy how they can continue to sustain their business or even divert to another uh, line of business so Lord watch over your church watch over your people as we offer unto you our giving this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people will say, Amen and Amen. Praise God. God loves a cheerful gift. For those of us who are, online, who are sitting right now, what you need to do is to scan the QR code right in front of your seat. And then what you need to do, open your bank app, 
and then uh, give your tithes and your offering. Now, for those of you who are more of what you're going to give your cash or your check, following this service, as you walk out the hall, there is the offering box. Just drop it in, you know, and then you can leave the premise. For those of you who are online, let's continue to, to give to the Lord because we know that our giving is enabling us to fulfill the mandate and the mission of Grace Assembly of God. So thank you once again, gracious and friends, for giving generously to the Lord so that we can continue uh, to be a ministry, a blessing, both locally and regionally. Amen. Praise God. Are you happy to be the house of the Lord this morning? Yeah. What about those of you who are watching online? If you are happy, would you type the word happy? Hallelujah. So right now, I want all of us to focus our eyes on this weekend, Grace News. Hi Gracians, welcome home. We're coming to the end of the third quarter of 2021 and I'm sure many of us are blessed as we journey alongside each other in our spiritual walk. As we count our blessings and give thanks, let me take you through a recap of what has happened in Grace Assembly in the last three months. July started off with our 40-day prayer for Singapore for our daily devotionals. The first weekend was also Missions Awareness Weekend and we recounted our church's missional journey and God's faithful guidance. Mid-July, we began our journey through the book of Exodus with a new sermon series titled Breaking the Circuit. The Chinese ministry also had their baptism service on that same weekend. Our social missions arm, Reach Community Services, launched their annual E-Flag Day, a pocket full of hope, and many Gracians, including our Grace Kids, participated in the fundraising initiative to support the least, the lost, and the lonely in our community. In August, we celebrated National Day as a church and gave thanks to the Lord for His faithful protection and blessings upon our nation, Singapore. We also had a special online J333 prayer session to pray for our nation. On 21st August, we restarted our on-site adult services with safe management measures and we were encouraged to see Gracians returning to church in person. That same Sunday, we also rejoiced and celebrated with our pastors who were honoured and recognised as ordained ministers. As Grace Assembly moves toward being a hybrid church, the needs are greater. A volunteer recruitment drive was launched and we have received over 100 responses thus far. So thank you for taking the next step to serve this house. If you are keen to join a serve team in our church, head to graceaog.org slash serve to register your interest. Finally, on 5th September, Grace Kids return to Grace at Tanglin for their first on-site service in a long time. We also had our Mooncake Community Outreach Program where Gracians delivered goodie bags filled with mooncakes and other essential items to bless residents in the community. As we reach out, it is our constant prayer that the love of God will be demonstrated through Grace Assembly to touch the lives of those around us. Lastly, we want to extend a warm welcome and rejoice with those who have decided to declare their faith through water baptism and become part of the Grace Assembly family at our recent baptism service held both at Grace at Tanglin and Grace at Bukipato. Wow, so much has happened in the past three months and we are grateful for what God is doing in the life of our church. We are one church with different ministries reaching people for Christ. Speaking of which, here are some opportunities for you to take the next step in your faith. Join us for our J333 Bilingual Prayer Session this coming Wednesday on the 29th of September. Gather your family and your Grace Group members and tune in to our J333 Zoom Room at 8pm for a time of corporate prayer. Do remember to get the Zoom password from your leaders or pastors beforehand. After the book of Deuteronomy, which will end on the 30th of September, Grace Every Morning will take a short break from the 1st to the 10th of October. Our past daily devotional remain accessible online anytime. So do remember to tune in to our Grace Every Morning on Monday, 11th of October, when he returns with the Book of Psalms. Also, here are a couple of updates for this week. Some of you may have realised that Grace Kids are missing in Tanglin campus today. In line with our government's move to protect our young children, during this period, amid a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases, the church has also decided to suspend our on-site services for our Grace Kids Sparkle and Shine children, that is ages 3 to 10. As such, for today, as well as next Sunday, 3rd October, 
there will be no on-site services for Grace Kids. Instead, all our Sparkle and Shine children will gather online via Zoom at 9am together. Parents will be notified about the Zoom link for the online Grace Kids service on Sunday morning itself. Next weekend is Holy Communion weekend. Our emerged preteens are encouraged to attend the main services with their parents. If you are joining us online, do prepare your own Holy Communion emblems and gather your family members together before you tune in for our services next week. For those of you who are joining us in church for our on-site services, do remember to start booking your tickets from this coming Friday, 12 noon. With that, I want to encourage us that church is not about a weekend or a building. We are the church, so let's stay connected and be the church wherever we are. We are one church reaching people for Christ. Amen and amen. Shall we give the Lord a big praise offering? What God is doing for the last quarter, people are getting saved, getting very baptized. And I want all of us to just shout, one church. Yeah, let's try again. One church. For those of you, you will type one. So this morning, I want to invite all of us to stand before Pastor Joey comes and minister the word. It's important for us to pray for our children because they're sitting for their PSLZ exam. And we want to pray for all the children and we want to pray for God's protection. So right now, you know, if your children is with you, why don't you just pray and bless them, lay hands on your children right now. For those of you, you know, your children, perhaps they are not, they are watching uh, uh, at home right now. Would you just right now, you can stretch out your hands, begin to pray and ask the Lord to bless every child. Amen. Father, this morning, we lift up our hands before you. We acknowledge indeed, Lord, you have given us children as, our, as a reward of what, how we can continue to showcase your glory and your love. This morning, we want to pray for all our children. You brought us that you protect their health, strengthen their body, Lord, grant them wisdom and joy even as they prepare for the examination. We pray, Father, for every child to find rest with you, in you. Lord, remove the stress and the pressure. We pray for your presence to be with every child as they take time to prepare their lessons. Remove every anxiety, but grant them peace and joy. And the Greek game, that give them a sense of purpose in why they do what they do. We pray for every parent that Lord, you remove their worries and anxiety, that they will continue, Lord, to come alongside with their children, to, to cheer them on, uh, to prepare, Lord, the children to be ready for the examination. So we pray, Father, this morning for every child that's preparing for the examination. Watch over them in their going out, watch over them in their coming in. We bless them in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And all God's people will say, Come on, shall we give the Lord a big praise offering? Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Well, this morning we continue our sermon series called Breaking the Circuit. And we have Pastor Joey Ashton. He's the head of our next gen pastor. He has a heavy responsibility, you know, children. He takes care of the baby, the youth, the children, the youth, and the young adults. So this morning he'll be ministering the word. And so please be seated as we prepare to receive God's word this morning. Amen. Last week, Yahweh demonstrated His power over the Egyptian gods. This week, the Israelites give thanks for God's protection as they observe the Passover. Good morning, Gracians. Good to see all of you here on site. And for those of you online, thank you for joining us as well. Why don't you type in the chat right now, we are Grace. Because whether we are on site or online, we are one church. Amen. You know, when I first began preparing the sermon, uh, there were about 664 cases in Singapore. As of yesterday, we have 1,443 cases in, in Singapore. And so, Gracians, we've got to make wise decisions. We've got to stay safe. We've got to pray for those in our governing authorities making decisions for the whole nation. It's a heavy responsibility on them, and we've got to pray for them. This is the ninth installment of our sermon series called Breaking the Circuit. And so, if you want to catch up on all that you have missed in the past eight uh, sermons, you can also click on our QR code that's going to be flashed on your screen right now. Uh, and you can also tune in to anywhere with podcasts to catch up on all the different sermons. 
You know, I trust that God has been opening your eyes and your heart to new insights, even through the familiar narratives that we have seen in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Exodus. Now today, we are going to be looking at Exodus 12, and the title of this message is simply PPE, or what we would know it as, Personal Protective Equipment. Now, if you have ever seen someone wearing PPE in Singapore, you are immediately reminded of a few things. Number one, you're reminded of a grab response driver. Maybe you've um, seen someone like that before with the windows rolled down and they are in full PPE. Or maybe you think about a SHN dedicated facility, frontline staff greeting those who just came back from overseas into their hotel. Or maybe you are immediately thinking about someone who's working in the clinic or working in the hospital as a healthcare worker. Now you see, PPE is a visual reminder that COVID is still here. Safe entry gateways, masks, ARTs, and PPEs have become symbols of Singapore's COVID journey. And similar to PPE, uh, similar, similarly, PPE to Singapore's COVID journey is like Passover to the Israelites' exodus journey. But for them, Passover meant a lot more to them than PPE means to us. This passage that we're looking at this morning is sandwiched between nine plagues, the foretelling and the execution of the 10th and final one, and the beginning of the exodus journey. It was as if Yahweh was creating an intermission, sending a strong message to his people, and this message was so important, they had to physically enact it. The big idea today is Yahweh provides the way to be rescued. Yahweh provides the way to be rescued. Now, God is always willing and able to provide a way to be rescued, even when we don't deserve it. And here's the thing. He waits for us to respond to Him. In Exodus 12, Yahweh gives instructions to His people on what to do on Passover and why they had to do it. But it still required um, it still required them to put their faith in God's method and to actually obey God to carry it out. So let's find out what they had to do and why they had to do it. This was how Yahweh provided the way for His people to be rescued. I have three things to say to you this morning. And the first one is that Yahweh provides the way of protection for those living in fear. Yahweh provides the way of protection for those living in fear. This Passover event is significant because in verse 2 of chapter 12, it records Yahweh marking a new beginning for His people. This is what the Word of God says, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Why? Because God was about to reset their understanding of time and seasons. They were about to go through the exodus and God wanted to help them see what time was really like. This one-day event leads into a seven-day event called the Feast of the Unleavened Bread where the Israelites were consciously reminded of God's intervention and protection. Now, according to verses 21 and 22, during the Passover, this is what the Israelites are to do. Go and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. Why? Because in the 10th plague, as recorded in verse 23, the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over. In the Hebrew, is this word called Pasach, and we will get into that later. The Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. Now, because of the English translation, there is some meaning that could perhaps be lost over the years. Some of you would think that the term Passover is derived from the way Yahweh passed over the doorpost of the house so that uh, pass over the doorpost of the house with the blood of the slain lamb. But if we examine the Hebrew word Pasak in verse 23, we learn that it is not just about God, it is not about God, 
bypassing the house. That means God is not like going past the house. But this idea is that God was passing over the house and dwelling at the entrance of the house. So God wasn't passing over, bypassing, but God was dwelling at the entrance of the house, fiercely protecting its inhabitants from his judgment and, of course, the death that will come with the judgment. This is a reinforcement of verse 13, where God told Moses, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pasak you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now this deliberate painting of the doorpost with blood was an invitation for God's people to actively put their faith in Yahweh to protect them. So as they carried out these instructions, you can imagine them, you know, painting their doorposts as if their lives depended on it. With every brush stroke, they knew, oh God, please protect me. Oh God, please protect me. That was for the Israelites. What Yahweh was about to do in the 10th plague was to pass judgment on Pharaoh who ordered the murder of all firstborn males, ironically, in Exodus 1. In verse 12, God said, I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will pass judgment. I am the Lord or I am Yahweh. Yahweh's message to the Egyptian gods was this, you are powerless against Yahweh. You're powerless against me. That's why in verse 11 and verse 27, it records this meal as Yahweh's Passover because God was personally involved in delivering the final message and the knockout punch of defeat to Pharaoh. He says to Pharaoh, I am Yahweh. If you don't know who I am, I am Yahweh. Now, if we were to fast forward from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we'll see that Jesus' journey to the cross actually began at the Last Supper. And this is no surprise, the Last Supper was actually taking place on the first day of the first month of the Jewish calendar, Passover. Not a surprise. He ate the Passover meal with his disciples and then he said something of incredible spiritual significance. In Luke chapter 22, verse 19, and this is a passage that most of us would hear every month, at the beginning of every month. It says, And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The early church celebrated both the Passover and they also commemorated the communion. The first one was to remember Yahweh delivering them from Egypt. And the latter one was to remember Jesus' death and resurrection from the grave. Now, communion was never about eating the emblems to be free from physical healing. We cannot appropriate communion for our personal needs because communion, like Passover, was never about us. I don't think a single Israelite in the Passover in Exodus, I don't think any of them ate the Passover meal hoping that it would heal them of some illnesses that they were going through. Passover was always a commemoration of deliverance from impending death. Now, if the Passover is about reminding the Jews about what Yahweh did for them in Egypt, then communion is about reminding us Christians what Jesus did on the cross for us. What Jesus did was to remind his disciples of the Passover through the Lord's Supper. He's saying to them, have no fear for God conquers the power of death. Gracious, is there a fear in your life that's greater than death? If Christ has conquered death, what, there, what then is there in life that he cannot conquer? With this, now we better understand, now we can have a better understanding of the purpose of Passover in chapter 12, verse 24 to 47, which was to help the Israelites remember this saving act. You shall observe this rite as a statute for you and your sons forever. 
And you shall, and, and when you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as He has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, for He passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when He struck the Egyptians but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. This is to be forever observed, always experienced and never forgotten. I shared not too long ago that about three years ago, my, my mom-in-law, she had leukemia. And we thank God that she's in remission right now. But during the time when she first got news of leukemia, she was in a state of shock, in a state of panic. Every single thing that she went through reminded her that life is so temporal, reminded her that, wow, I don't know whether this might be my last meal or my last treatment because she was seeing that her life was in danger. Now, everybody copes with fear in a very different way. And so for my mother-in-law, she was a new believer and she was trying to find ways to cope with this fear. So some well-meaning relatives, they actually passed her some reading material and they gave her a whole bag of communion emblems, right? And they said to her, hey, if you were to take these communion emblems before every meal or after every meal, take it three times a day, maybe they believe that my mom-in-law will get healing faster because they believe, some of these relatives believe that taking communion would improve their, or, or would, would cause healing to come upon them. You know, my mom was a very new believer. My mom-in-law was a very new believer. And so she has a pastor for son-in-law. And so when my wife and I visited her, I saw these reading materials on her bedside table and I saw the whole bag of communion emblems. I told my mom-in-law, I said, mommy, let me explain to you biblically what communion is about. Communion is not about eating it to, to appropriate blessing or to appropriate healing upon yourself. Communion is to remember what Christ has done on the cross for you and me, that He defeated death, that God raised Him from the dead and that's why we can celebrate. And so with this, I said, Mom, why don't we be grateful for what the relatives have done or have done for you, but let us remember the proper meaning of what communion is. So what then is the purpose of communion? Communion was not instituted by Jesus for physical healing. And it defeats the purpose of communion if we are taking it on our own, right? It's not single nian, it's communion, right? And so communion was instituted to remind us of what Christ did on the cross. And Passover reminds us that Yahweh has indeed provided a way of protection for those living in fear. So Gracians, maybe some of you here this morning, you are living in fear. You're living in fear of your physical health. You're living in fear of your job situation. You look at your situation at home and you're living in fear. Gracians, whether you're online, or whether you're here, here's the word of Yahweh for all of us, that God has provided the way of protection back then and right now for you. And God will personally rescue you. So put your faith in God. God will pasak and protect you. Do not fear. God is with you. Do we get an amen? Amen. God is with us. So if you are in the chat right now, why don't you type, God is with me? Because that's what you're proclaiming when you, whenever you think about the Passover. So Passover was God's provision for His people to be rescued from fear. And God Himself provides the way of protection. Now, second point I want to make today is Yahweh provides the way for those who are distant to find purpose again. Yahweh provides the way for those who are distant to find purpose again. Earlier, in my, in my point, you learn about the significance of Passover. Today and right now, we will get into how Yahweh accomplishes that by giving detailed instructions for enacting the Passover and to instill this God-given purpose for His people. Now, besides the Passover lamb, there was also unleavened bread, which is bread prepared without raising agents like yeast or baking soda. Now, if you are online right now, as I read the passage, why don't you type in the chat, 
some unleavened bread that you think you've been eating, okay? So type it in and let's see whether you can get it right. And for those of you who are on site, you'll be thinking, unleavened bread, is that gardenia? Is that sunshine? I don't know whether bonjou bread is still around, but is it fluffy bread or is it something else? Verse 15 tells us that seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day, you shall remove leaven out of your houses. For if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. Verse 18 tells us that in the first month, on the 14th day, from the 14th day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. Unleavened bread. Chapati is unleavened. Focaccia is unleavened. Pita and tortilla, they are all unleavened bread. But can you imagine eating that same tortilla wrap for 14 days in the first month of your year? I think that would make a pretty miserable diet, especially for us Singaporeans, right? Especially for those of you who are living in this Singapore haven of food. I think eating the same bread for 14 days is going to be an overkill. Why so much bread? So that the people are reminded repeatedly of the purpose of what they were doing. In every tortilla that they eat, they go like, Oh God, I want to remember the Passover, what you did for your people. In every single bread, every single meal that they ate, Yahweh knew that the people will forget. And that's why He instituted this because He knew that His people are prone to forget. That's why in verse 17, Yahweh told them, And you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your host out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. Remembering it from generation to generation is critical because the Israelites must not forget their God-redeemed identity and their God-given purpose. Verse 11, it also tells us the manner in which they shall eat it. With their belt fastened, their sandals on their feet, and with their staff in their hand, and you shall, and they shall eat it in haste. Now, we just had Mooncake Festival, right? Or Mid-Autumn Festival. Imagine eating your mooncake without chewing on them. Your really nice snow skin mooncake into your mouth within one second down your belly. Is that fun? Not really fun. Or maybe you go back to May, Tuan Wu Jie, or you know, uh, um, um, I don't know what that is in... Uh, where you eat dumplings, okay? I think this, I remember the food, right? Where you eat dumplings, can you imagine putting your dumplings in a blender, blend it all up and drinking it down? I don't think you want to do that. Can you imagine if for Chinese New Year, you go for reunion dinner and you eat your reunion dinner in 15 minutes? I don't think people want to do that, but they were called to do all of this to really fasten their belt, take the stuff in their hand, wear their sandals, and to quickly finish their meals. I don't think it is a very enjoyable process. But why did they have to eat in such an unnatural way? It is the same reason why they were eating unleavened bread for 14 days. To remind future generations what they experienced before the Exodus and what God did to save them. Imagine if you're a child and you see your parents fastening their belt, holding a staff in your hands and eating the Passover lamb with unleavened bread. You'll be thinking, mom, dad, what are you doing? Chill, relax, sit down. And then this gives an opportunity for the mom and the, uh, and the dad. Hey, child, this is why we are doing this. Because many, many, many years ago, and you go on to tell a tradition. This structured experience helped subsequent generations feel the sense of urgency that Israel had when they prepared to exit Egypt as Yahweh executed the final plague at midnight. As they consumed the meat, they were not dressed in tuxedos and dresses, enjoying hot pot. But they were in traveling attire, shoes worn with walking stick in hand and in haste, anticipating immediate departure. Why? I think you get it by now. To remember their God-given purpose by physically reenacting the Passover event. Now, I just want to make a little note here on the ingredients in the Passover meal. There were three ingredients, unblemished lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. 
And we'll just focus on the lamb. In verse 5, it says, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year a male old. In verse 8, They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Now, don't miss this part about the lamb without defects. Now we can fully understand why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 5, 7 that Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Right? Paul calls Christ our Passover lamb. And Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 and chapter 2, verse 22, that Christ is like that of a lamb without blemish or spot and that he committed no sin. So now we see the linking of the Old Testament with or see the linking of the New Testament into the Old Testament and we see, wow, Christ is now the unblemished Passover lamb. Now for this particular point, let me just share with you the prophetic burden that God has placed upon my heart. The main purpose of the Passover meal was to help the Israelites remember Yahweh's deliverance, correct? Because maybe their faith would grow cold or would be weakened over time, whether immediately in the wilderness or whether in subsequent generations. And that is why Yahweh provided this Passover rite of passage, especially for future generations who would have not witnessed Yahweh's miracles and might not know how to acknowledge Yahweh personally. This future Israelite or this person might say, I'm not in trouble. I'm not facing death. I don't need rescue. I have everything I need. Frankly, I'm not really interested. And well, if I dare to say it, mom, dad, who is this Yahweh anyway? Perhaps you can relate to this because your child or your parent or your spouse or your sibling is saying that to you about his or her Christian faith. In this pandemic, regardless of age or season of life, if we are being honest, some of us here, we have lost the routine of going to church because now church has come to us. This is convenience, no doubt. And we praise God for the increased accessibility that we have through digital means. But is this same convenience slowly eroding our faith and our fellowship? We the people are the church, no doubt about that. But sometimes we think that church is just a building, a service, or an event. It's much more. We are the church. But whether you realize it or not, being away from corporate worship and fellowship with believers, it will affect your faith journey. The irregularity, or scarily enough, the absence, won't affect your salvation but it will affect your Christian growth. We all know that sliding away from the Christian, we all know that sliding away from God doesn't take place overnight. It always begins with one error, one excuse, and one exception. I remember during my NS days, I was confined for a period of time. I was confined during training for a period of time. And um, almost every weekend I'll be confined because my platoon, we got into a lot of trouble. And so sometimes we would only book out on Sunday morning and we had to book in on Sunday evening. So when we uh, booked out, it was like, I remember this Sunday we, we, we booked out. Uh, it was about 8 a.m. when I finally got home and I had to be uh, reporting back into camp at about 6 p.m. Okay, so I only had a few hours out. I did my laundry. I turned on, blast my aircon, decided to, you know, enjoy the comforts of home. And I told myself, God, this is Sunday, right? This is Sabbath, right? God, I know you love me, right? God, you know I love you, right? God, I know that you know that my attendance in church has been pretty good ever since I enlisted. Every time I can book out, I'll be there. But God, this morning, I am so tired, God. I just want to rest in your presence on my bed. And so I made a decision there and there. I earned it. I earned this rest. And I said to the Lord, Lord, Be with me as I rest. So I slept at 9 o'clock, but at 10 a.m., a woman called the mother barged into my room. And with godly anger, she said to me, the man lying down on the bed, Joe, 
Why are you still in bed? You are supposed to go to church. And I said, Mommy, I had a long week of training. I want to rest in bed. Can or not? She said, No! You are the man of the house. You are the man of God in this house. You must go to church. And I looked at her. <laughs> okay, mom, I get it. I get it now. Then I, I woke up my idea. And up to today, up to today, I am so thankful that my mom instilled in me, not the fear of mom, okay? Not the fear of God. But she instilled in me the routine of being with God weekly to being with the corporate body weekly, to worship and to receive and to be in fellowship weekly. And to this day, I see myself doing that for the children to make sure that they understand this routine, this ritual, this spiritual habit. Christians, is there a ritual that you have to restore that the pandemic has taken away? Is there a routine you need to restart is there a habit you need to re-establish? Service doesn't make you a better worshipper. Grace groups don't make you better believers. But having neither increases the chances of you becoming more distant from the faith. We all know someone who is far from God. That someone might be in your grace group. It might even be in your family. Or maybe that someone is you. Yes, there are people who are indifferent about God or there are people who feel distanced from God. But God is not indifferent about them. God is not indifferent about you. God is not indifferent about those who are far from Him because He desires for them to be near to Him. Church, Yahweh always provides the way even for those who are indifferent about Him so that they can be rescued by Him and to eventually find their true God-given purpose in Him. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. As with the Passover, it is the blood of the Lamb that brings us near to God. He recognizes the blood-stained doorposts and dwells there with us. Us. And finally, Yahweh provides an entrance into community for those who are excluded. This is my final point today. Yahweh provides an entrance into community for those who are excluded. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. This is the statute of the Passover. No foreigner shall eat of it, but every slave that is bought for money may eat of it after you have circumcised him. No foreigner or hired worker may eat of it. Verse 48, If a stranger shall sojourn with you and would keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. Then he may come near and keep it. He shall be as a native of the land, but no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. There shall be one law for the native and for the stranger who sojourns among you. Living among the Israelites were two groups of foreigners slaves and sojourners. The instruction, if these foreigners wanted to be a permanent, permanently accepted into Yahweh's community and be included in Yahweh's covenantal blessing, it was simple, it was straightforward. Circumcision of all the males. Now this is significant because it allows anyone who doesn't come from the line of Abraham to be a recognized member of God's nation. And it fulfills what Yahweh covenanted to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, to bless all the nations through him. Okay, so this is very significant. And finally, in uh, back to Exodus chapter 12, verse 46 to 47, we see a picture of the unified family of God. Verse 46, It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the flesh outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. A beautiful scene, Israelites and non-Israelites worshipping God together and remembering this event on the first night of their calendar year. Regardless of ethnicity, nationality, gender, language, education, or financial status, or which political party or football team you support, through one meal made possible by a Passover lamb that is Jesus, we get a chance to enter and be a part of God's community. 
but there is an entrance fee. And thank God, you and I don't have to be circumcised because Jesus has already shed His blood for us. Jesus has paid the entrance fee. Yahweh has provided a way to rescue those who are excluded to find an entrance into God's family. But there is a cost of community. When you, when you become a part of this set-apart family, you have to lay aside your preferences, your conveniences, your biases, and your idiosyncrasies. How can the community be strengthened if all we do is think about what's in it for us and what we can get from it instead of what we can give to it or do to make the community stronger? Community is so much more than belonging to something. It's about doing something together that makes belonging matter. We get to belong to the same community because of what Christ has done. And it is because of what Christ has done that the entrance to this community must always be open. Now, to be honest, as a pastor, finding community is a slightly different experience for me. I've attended different grace groups and all with similar outcomes. I get to say grace all the time. I get asked for my input during the teaching. I get to answer tougher theological questions. And I always get the privilege of opening and closing in prayer. I'm so grateful that Gracians find a way to include me in their community and they allow me to contribute in a way that they know how to. But Gracians, every individual, whether you're a pastor, or whether you're a newcomer, will add to the community in their own unique way. The extroverts, they add liveliness. The introverts, they add insightfulness. The hosts, they add warmth. The regulars, they add faithfulness. The teachers add depth. The warriors add warfare. The creative ones add fun. The musically inclined ones add to the worship atmosphere. And even those who are new will add openness. And in Singapore, one of the most important roles, those in charge of the food, they make the experience full. Every single role adds to the community becoming more inclusive. It's about doing something together that makes belonging matter. Being an inclusive community is not just the job of the leader or the Xiao On member. It is the responsibility of every believer, every believer who entered the community because of Christ and is now obligated to do their part, to pull their weight in making community work for others who will enter in the future because of Christ. So gracious, Yahweh provides the way to be rescued. For those living in fear, He provides protection. For those living in indifference, distanced, He provides purpose. For those living in exclusion, He provides an entrance into community. Protection, purpose, entrance. This is God's PPE. Not just in the Exodus, but in our everyday lives. PPE, protection, purpose, entrance. And God is still providing us with a lifeline to Him. Without this PPE, you are exposed. It's not about what you can do or what you have done, but it is about what God has done for you. Would you give me this opportunity to pray for all of us in this room right now? Let's respond to the Lord and let the Word of the Lord sink into your hearts the significance of Passover, let it rest in your heart. Patience. For those of you who are living in fear, health fear, financial fear, job security fear, the word of the Lord for you this morning, I will protect you. I will pasak over you and I will guard you. I will protect you. I will help you. And so if you are living in that fear right now, why don't you put your hand on your heart, whether you're at home or you're in the building right now, put your hand on your heart. You say, God, pass up over me. 
dwell in my life and keep me safe. And there's some of us here who know of someone who is far away from the faith. And today you say to the Lord, Lord, use me. Use me to bring these who are far away from you, distant from you, indifferent about you. Use me, Lord, to bring them back to you. Remind, use me, O oh Lord, to remind these ones of their God-given purpose, that they have a destiny, they have a beautiful future for them. Use me, Lord, in this coming week to bring them back to your embrace. If that is you and you know someone who's far away or feeling indifferent about God, why don't you put your hand on your heart? You say, God, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me to touch my child, my spouse, my parent, my colleague, my grace group member who I haven't seen in a long time. Lord, use me, Lord. And there's one last group for those of us who are saying, God, I've been in this community for as long as I know it. Lord, I want to do my bit to make community inclusive. I want to remember that the entrance to this community is always open because of Jesus Christ who paid the entrance fee. And so, Father, help me to make my grace group more inclusive. Help me to make this church filled with your people more inclusive. Use me, Lord, as a leader to help newcomers come into our church and to make this church more inclusive. If that is you, why don't you just put your hand in your heart and say, God, use me, Lord, to make this church more inclusive. So Father, we pray, Lord, that your holy presence will be with everyone who needs protection, be with everyone who has someone distant that they want to bring back to the community, and you would also help everyone in this church to make this church always entrance open for anyone to step into our community. Spirit, touch your church, Lord, and use us, Lord. Remind us of what church is about and remind us, oh God, to always look at you for it is about what you have done and not what we have done. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand and let's worship the Lord with a song. Hallelujah. Spirit, touch your church and stir the hearts of men. Revive us, Lord, with the passion once again. I want to care for others like Jesus cares for me. Let your rain Hallelujah. fall on me. Come on, church, shall we lift up our hands? Lord, touch your church. We are the church. Thank you, Lord. Revive us, Lord. Stir in us. Thank you, Lord. I want to care for others like Jesus cared for me. Let your I believe God has already spoken. And Pastor Joey was sharing and his ministry to us. You know, this morning I came to church and I took a grab here and, and then, you know, the drivers in a way turned to me and said, are you a pastor? Well, I'm going to church. Of course, probably I'm a pastor. Say, how do you know? You look like one. <laughs> and then in a the conversation, actually this driver or this grab driver says, I've been disappointed and hurt by the church. And in the course of the conversation, I, want, I wanted to be in the presence of the Lord, you know, just like with Pastor Joey, because I'm preparing myself to come to the church for the service, but yet I was interrupted. And I had a conversation with this driver, and along the way, I began to talk to him. I say, give God one more chance. Come back again. Come back again. And, you know, I just want to share with us, as I left, before I left, I says, can I pray for you? 
Church, there will be many, many opportunities that will come because we believe God is using every person available to reach out and bring them into God's community. So this morning, I invite all of us to just lift up our hands. Just because it says, God, here I am. Thank you, Lord, for the rescue plan. I am rescued. So I'm going to be a part to rescue others to come into your presence. I'm going to be a part of what God is going to do in my life. Amen. So let us lift up our hands. We're going to pray this morning. Hallelujah. Father, this morning, we thank you for your word. We thank you that, God, we no longer need to live in fear, but we need, can live in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That, God, you will protect us and that you will direct our path each day. Lord, we do not need to fear what is tomorrow because you are there for us already. And so, Father, I pray may your people continue to stay anchored in their faith in you. And I pray, Father, that for those of us who are far away for whatever reason, even for creation, perhaps have been hurt, perhaps there's some confusion, but I pray this morning, will, they, will you touch them? Will you, Father, bring them back into the alignment because they are a part of this great family, the Grace family. And I pray for all of us who are tuning online and even here right now. We pray for an alignment that we will take the position as stewards, as stakeholder of Grace Assembly, that we want to see God doing great things using every one of us in this local church. And we pray above all that we want to be stay connected. Father, use every man, every woman, use every person throughout this season that we can reach out to share, to pray, and to connect with them. Because indeed, we serve a God who is so good, so wonderful, a God who thinks about us, a God who wants to empower us for His purpose. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people will say, Come on, shall we give the Lord a big, big praise offering what God is doing? You know, church, I want to encourage us. It is a powerful message. Don't just listen one. It will be on a YouTube. Go back, listen to it, and let the word of the Lord sink deep into your heart and we can walk in the victory of the Lord. One more time, shall we give the Lord a big praise offering? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Shall we pray before we go? Father, indeed, we thank you for your message this morning. We say, God, empower us. Show us once again your glory. Show us once again what it means to walk in your perfect will and plan. And now to him who is able to do more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generation forever and ever. Amen and amen. Come on, church. One more time. Shall we give all a big praise offering? Amen. Hallelujah. For those of you who are watching online, you know, you can, if you're new, come and join us. Hello at Grace. Perhaps for those of you who watch this, this service and the message and you have questions in regards to this sermon, you can come and meet the pastor using the Hello at Grace same link so that we are able to just to share with you. And perhaps you have a prayer need as well this morning. Would you join our online host pastors? They'll be there to pray with you. So God bless you. Stay connected with us and do follow us through our social media and we'll see you next week. God bless you and have a wonderful and awesome week. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.